think that's got it. Just one more little tweak. <laughs> Whoa, okay. All right, okay. Hey folks, welcome back to the Pterodome. So as you can see, I'm still here on the ice planet. I haven't even made my way to the crash JP Merchoid ship yet because the computer's circuits are all freezing up and it's taking much longer to correlate a safe path to that ship that might actually hold potential parts for me to get off this planet. So until then, I'm just biding my time, fixing what I can in this ship at... Okay, the lights are starting to go out. Fixing what I can on this ship before setting out. And this little solenoid panel has been sparking and causing me some grief recently, so I'm just trying to fix it as best I can because I don't want to cause a fire on the ship. Anyway, I don't really have much to talk about today, so I'm sorry there's not really going to be much of a video. Um, you'll have to just come back next time once I'm, I'm done fixing what I can of the ship. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. I'll catch you around. Alright, come here. Going up. <sighs> oh. Where the hell am I? Doors opening. The hell? No way. I'm back on Earth. <laughs> I'm back on Earth. I don't know how it happened, but the magnetic coils in the solenoid that I was trying to fix must have created a sort of bubble around me and transported me back to Earth. I don't have to be trapped on that ice planet anymore. Oh, oh, thank God. This is amazing. And I'm at the cinema. See, look, the Mario movie. Everyone's excited about that, I think. And Shazam. That's out. <laughs> Oh, I can't pass up this opportunity. I could go see a movie on the big screen for the first time in years. 65. Yes. Let's go watch it and then I'll tell you all about it afterwards. I'm back, baby. I'm back. 65 finally makes dinosaurs scary again. It will have you on the edge of your seat is best experienced on the big screen. 65 for the PG-13, only in theaters Thursday. Oh, yes, a pint, a pint. I am so looking forward to this. I haven't had a nice cold beer in so long. Oh, but you guys want to know my thoughts on 65. Well, I think it's actually a really solid movie. Um, it does exactly what it says on the tin, uh, except for one sort of story aspect, which I wasn't expecting, um, was sort of shown in the trailers, so you kind of knew what to get. Um, but that didn't take away from the movie. I thought the, the tension and the survival aspect of the movie was, was really tense, despite there only really being two characters in the whole movie. Um, perhaps the movie could have benefited from having maybe extra characters uh, that could get eaten off, you know, who survived the crash. Um, but as far as uh, Adam Driver's character Mills and the young girl, uh, Cora, the character's name is, in the movie, as far as they go, how they're acted and how you attach yourself to them in the story, they, they do a brilliant job. And, um, and so even though I kind of knew, I don't know if Mills was going to survive, um, but I kind of thought they're not going to kill off the little girl because, spoilers, they actually kill off a, cat, a, a young girl at the beginning of the movie sort of through an illness and um, and so I knew she would survive but it didn't take away from any of the sort of uh, tension building moments it was like it was really tense and there was a few moments actually where I actually jumped out of my seat um, the cinema I was watching it in the sound was actually really loud um, which actually benefited those jump scares um, those jump scare moments so uh, yeah it was it was really good in that regard um, yeah, so the characters, really good. Uh, Adam Driver especially was really interesting and, uh, and I thought he, he didn't seem like any other character I've seen him play in, in, in movies recently. Um, I'm a big fan of him since watching House of Gucci and The Last Duel, the two Ridley Scott films. I thought those movies were phenomenal and he was really good in both of those. And now 65, I think he does a stand-up job. 
Um, there's some light-hearted moments with the characters that I wasn't expecting. Uh, some really like kind of uh, uh, nice moments where they were building their relationship because there's a there's a language barrier between the two of them. Uh, that was really cool to see. And um, yeah, so in terms of characters, solid performances, and uh, they were engaging to the point where. Uh, you really cared for them to achieve their mission. The music actually was something that I was really interested in as well because the um, I wasn't expecting like any bombastic themes or anything like a Jurassic Park theme or something, but the music was actually more light-hearted uh, than I was expecting for the most part, um, and it was really uh, kind of lovely in places. And it's a soundtrack that I'd actually like to get to listen to away from the film. Um, there wasn't any like themes as I mentioned that sort of stuck with me. Um, but it, it, it kept little little moments, little melodies came out that I was like, oh, I want to listen to this away from the movie and take it all in. And, uh, and when the tension moments and the scary moments happened, the music was so good. Um, again, no real themes uh, are stuck in my mind, but I just remember feeling like this mu music is like pumping the scene up a lot. And uh, yeah, really, really good. I need to get us all ready. Run. Oh, the dinosaurs. Yes, the dinosaurs. You want to hear my thoughts on those dinosaurs. Um, the dinosaurs were fantastic. They're not in the movie like um, like an amazing amount, but I actually think that really helped for the movie because you're anticipating every single time a dinosaur is going to appear um, and every little subtle noise or, or tree crack or something like that, you're like, oh, something's coming. And it sort of put you in the shoes of the characters. Um, standout dinosaurs for me were the there was these raptors that ate this sort of baby t-rex ankylosaurus thing uh, quite early on in the movie and they were pretty menacing um and i think one of them comes back later on in the film which the girl cora kills they were really cool and, uh, and horrible horrible looking a lot of the dinosaurs were really horrible looking in this there were these like uh, sort of really slinky like puma snake like dinosaurs which um which were climbing down from the trees and stuff, and they were really cool. They didn't say any names of the dinosaurs or anything like that, and I'm glad they don't because it's like, it just, it, it doesn't matter. The, the story puts you in the shoes of these characters who come to Earth and are experiencing these sort of reptilian beasts firsthand, and they, if the dinosaurs seem alien to us, the audience watching, that's because that's how the characters in the movie are feeling towards them so I kind of like that they lent into the sort of monstrous designs of these dinosaurs and uh, and just had fun with it so there was a big t-rex sequence towards the end of the movie where these two t-rexes I believe they were both meant to be two t-rexes one had like stripes on it and one was like the sort of kind of classic old school t-rex uh, were attacking them when they were in the sort of escape pod trying to get off the planet and uh, that sequence was really good, except for, I would argue, uh, I don't know if this will transfer to home media better, but I would argue that if it doesn't, the this whole scene was a bit too dark and, um, and could have done with a little bit more light to see kind of what's going on. But that, again, that might be the screen I watched it in, so I'll wait to till the uh, home media release before I fully judge that sequence. Um, and then my favourite dinosaur, which was my favourite in the trailer and uh, and definitely in this movie, was this kind of four-legged quadruped T-Rex thing that just... It, it, you see it first standing upright in the bushes and then it comes down on all fours and it, it's just such a cool design of, for a monster and it's like the final the final boss of the movie. It kind of it kind of been tracking the characters through the, uh, through, through the film. And, um, and then they face it off at the end. Um, and it's a brief face off. Uh, a lot of the dinosaur encounters are very brief. Uh, the dinosaurs get killed pretty easily, and, uh, but obviously the humans can get killed pretty easily. And they, they set up that this is a very doggy dog world, which it would have been. Um, and so that's where some of the tension lies. Um, but yeah, so, so even though this last sequence with this giant four-legged dinosaur wasn't like overly long or extravagant, um, what they did with it was enough to, to satisfy me anyway. Um, and I thought, yeah, it was really cool and clever and really brutal the way they took it out. Um, <laughs> there's the graphics, the CGI was really good and um, on, on this thing's death. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you know, like they have this close up of it's like the face has all been mangled. And it's just, ugh. Well, anyway, overall, I would say 65 is one of the best dinosaur movies we've ever gotten and what I mean by that is obviously Jurassic Park set the sort of benchmark for dinosaur films and um, 
and it, it probably won't ever get topped really. But the the sort of the dinosaur genre, like we have to remember, before Jurassic Park came out in 1993, the the, the dinosaur genre was kind of like the realm of B movies, really. The closest to a sort of an A movie we got with dinosaurs are like Ray Harryhausen movies, um, and they, they were A movies, but. At the time, I remember a lot of people talking about how like stop motion rubber dinosaurs weren't really up there with the big leagues of like I don't know the Godfather or <laughs> or um, you know Jaws and all that sort of stuff. Then Jurassic Park comes along and people started to take dinosaur movies a little bit more seriously. But they've never, aside from the Jurassic Park series, they've never really um, been taken that seriously outside of that. I think Peter Jackson's King Kong was the only one that like truly. Got uh, got to the level of uh, people taking dinosaur movies more seriously, and uh, and then most other dinosaur movies just tend to be like straight to DVD crap basically. Um, but uh, then sixty five has come along, and even though it is a, a very simple story, it's a it's, it is cut from a sort of similar cloth as like a fifties or sixties old school dinosaur movie. Um, just told with modern effects, I think that's actually a really good thing, and I think it's the characters that drive the movie well enough for it to be considered uh, a solid film, a good film. It's uh, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not a bad movie. It's not a cheap looking movie. It's well acted, and uh, and it should be up there with the likes of Jurassic and Peter Jackson's King Kong, in my opinion. So that's my review of 65. I um, I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to my brief breakdown of this movie. Uh, I think everyone who liked dinosaur movies or monster movies should go and check it out because it's, it's really interesting being placed in sort of the prehistoric era in a big budget movie like this. And yes, it's not accurate. It doesn't need to be accurate. Um, it, it's it's meant to be for for sci-fi action horror thriller fun. That's what it's all. What's what's meant to be, um, and I think through doing the kind of uh, sort of more inaccurate monstrous dinosaurs and this world they've set up, it actually puts you into this kind of like primordial sense that this is a uh, an e or be eaten world, which as I mentioned before. It, that's what it should be um, and so I really like that and I think it's uh, it'll go down as a, a dinosaur movie that sh is respected well respected even though it's it it doesn't have the accurate dinosaurs as many people out there online like to complain about um, and uh, yeah I think if they actually really tried to make it super accurate I think it wouldn't actually have stood stood the test of time I think by just going screw that we're gonna do our own thing it, it instantly places it in the sort of realm of it doesn't date itself ironically it looks like it should date itself because it's got these old school monstrous designs it but they're not really old school monstrous designs they're they're their own designs and they stand out from movies like jurassic park and peter jackson's king kong and they especially those like slinky looking ones that come down from trees um they they have their own unique style and um, and movements to them and yeah they, they will be memorable that's the way i should uh, phrase it so yes anyway that's my review of 65 glad i've gone to see see it i will be picking it up on home media so I, there's one to keep and it's definitely a good one i think for halloween so if you want a good dinosaur movie to watch around halloween this is the one um even though it's not got much bloodshed or anything like that um the tension is high enough and the, the scare factor is just enough to make it a, probably the best dinosaur horror movie they've made I'll let you stew on that one. Anyway, I'm going to stew on this beer because this is what I've really been waiting for. <gasps> oh, God. <laughs>